everybody, fellow travelers. Welcome back to the Adventures of a Traveling Dawn. My name is Benjamin O, and today we're continuing our journey across the West, and we have made it here to Seattle, and we're gonna go grab something to eat real quick here at the famous Pike's Place Market. at the Pike Place Market, you have an abundance of options for places for breakfast, lunch, dinner, food galore. It's absolutely fantastic. Of course, the market itself is amazing when it comes particularly to seafood. However, one spot that is very famous and very old is Lowell's Restaurant. Started in 1908 as kind of cafeteria uh, with uh, kind of like, uh, I think they did peanuts and coffee roastery at the same time. Uh, and then in 1957, it changed over into a restaurant. It's a three-story restaurant. Uh, it's got waterfront views, I think, on every floor. It looks, it's really, really cool. If you come into the second floor, which is the bar, so you have to be 21 plus to be in this particular um, floor, uh, this is kind of more of the diner sort of you, you get served on. I think below is the cafeteria style where you go up, grab your stuff, put it on a tray, and then take it, take, take it to your table. So. They have a couple different ways of doing it. They have a lot of, of course, great selections when it comes to the seafood options. Myself, right now, we're gonna have, be having seafood throughout the day, so I'm gonna start off with some eggs, uh, over medium, some uh, extra bacon, I asked for the extra bacon, and of course, some sausage. And the plate came out, it was enormous, it was great, uh, it was absolutely, absolutely delicious. And it's about like 22 bucks. You know, it's gonna be, you know, it's a premium spot, so it is gonna be a little bit pricier than a traditional diner, but the food was absolutely fantastic, and like I said, it all comes from the market. Okay, so now that we have filled up a bit, we're gonna head down Pike Street to the Starbucks uh, Roastery. We're actually gonna go back to Pike's Place and kind of thoroughly explore the market in a little bit, but that's when my cousin Bobby Ray joins us. So anyway, let's head up to Starbucks. So we're here in the Starbucks Roastery here in Seattle. This place is massive. I've actually been here once before and I think they've expanded it because there's now like four parts to it. It's just absolutely huge. I mean, this is amazing. Like you, you get in line and you get your coffee uh, in kind of like the central area of it. That's where kind of like the whole barista setup is. And then from there you have like all the, you have the gift shop, of course. You have the bakery, which is brand new. That like, I think that used to be an old, uh, actually I've been, I've been uh, joined in by uh, my cousin here, Bobby Ray. Hey guys. What's up guys? How's it going? All right, so where the bakery is, that used to be a restaurant? Yeah, it used to be a pizza, like a wood, iron, wood, for, wood fire oven pizza place. Mm -hmm. I think it was, I might be getting it wrong. It might be, it might have been like part of like a Tom Douglas thing. Okay. I, believe all right, so so they've expanded since then took that over that's turned into a whole bakery so you got fresh breads all that kind of stuff they've got a whole bar system uh that i don't think i remember the bar was the setup the way that it is now so that's really kind of cool uh so you can kind of get your coffees with your alcohol your espresso martinis things like that and then down here in this area where we're at this is i believe and it used to be this is sitting there yeah so i think this is all private um this is now a private tasting uh, spot right here, which I think you can get like kind of like very uh, premium stuff uh, and get like the whole experience, uh, like a true coffee tasting. So yeah, this place is absolutely massive. Now for actually having my coffee. So what I got here is something that I've had, I think once before, and that is the whiskey barrel aged coffee. So their coffee is from Guatemala and they age it in Knob Creek bourbon whiskey barrels. So I'm gonna tell you right now, it smells so good. I'm gonna give you this big ice. It basically looks like you're having a glass of really dark whiskey, but it is just coffee. Again though, barrel aged in bourbon, so you're gonna get some of that. So let's try that. Oh yeah. Yeah, see you get um, 
you get a little bit of kind of like that bourbon smokiness to it. And then I think they also add a little bit of vanilla simple syrup just to kind of sweeten that up for you. But ooh, that's good. All right, well, that was fun. I mean, that place is absolutely fantastic. Now, onwards to Pike's Place. All right, so we've headed back down towards Pike Place Market, but before you get there, uh, there uh, just about a block up is this place called Post Alley. Bobby Ray, what is Post Alley? Post Alley, I don't know, it's an alley in between uh, just before or after First Avenue, I guess. I don't know. Never really asked about it. Yeah. It's just the post alley. It is kind of cool though, because it has all these kind of like you know, just you know, local, unique restaurants, Irish pubs, chocolate shops, uh, some stores. But it's like in between. It looks like a very, as it is, alley, a very small alley uh, through like between all the uh, historical buildings, red brick buildings, things like that. Really kind of nice. Just definitely come out over here uh, while you're in the Pike Place area because it's really neat. So, so far on Post Alley, I think my favorite shop that I've kind of just poked my head in is this perennial tea room. I just had coffee, so I don't need any more caffeine right now, but it, you walk in and it smells fantastic. I think it's been around for like, she said 30 years, and the girl is at the front. So it's like 30 years of tea, just like you smell it. It's like, wow, this place is really cool. I love tea. So this is, yeah, this is my kind of shop. This is amazing. So another place here along Post Alley that uh, my cousin Aaron recommended to me is this place called Rachel's Ginger Beer. So it's just kind of like a tap ginger beer place. You can actually come in and get the cocktails as well. Uh, but I went ahead and just got myself a nice cucumber tarragon uh, ginger beer, which uh, I've never had a cucumber tarragon ginger beer. So cheers to you guys and let's try it. What'd you get, man? I got the cucumber tarragon. Okay. Ooh, that's good too. Very refreshing. It's like heavy, heavy on the cucumber flavor there. Wow. Kind of puckered up there. <laughs> That's really, really good. Which one did you get, Bobby Ray? Spicy pineapple. Give it a taste. Tell us how it is. Oh, yeah. Look, if that had alcohol in it, amazing. <laughs> that Pisco from last night? Yes. Yeah. They, we just, they just figured out what Pisco was yesterday. They had a bottle of it, and I was like, yeah, Peruvian Pisco? Like, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna try some of that probably when we get back. So the history of Pike's Place Market actually goes back to 1907, and it is still one of the oldest, longest running public markets in the United States. And it's really kind of cool because you have different, you know, everybody knows, of course, about the famous fish tossing place and the seafood that you get here. But there's also a lot of other stuff, not just foods. There's a lot of crafts, arts, you know, a bunch of different things that you can find at any market you find here at Pike's Place. This is an absolutely massive place. And it looks like they're going, particularly outside, under a lot of renovation and construction to expand and I guess kind of like revitalize and modernize the, uh, the the Pike's Place while still keeping some of its traditional um, traditional setups as well. So it's it's kind of cool. I'm, I'm interested to see what it's actually fully going to look like in about, you know, a few years once it's all set up. But this is, I, I really like Pike Place. Every time I come down to Seattle, this is definitely a must to do. One thing to remember when you are doing Pike's Place Market is that when you come off of the Pike's Place Street, which is kind of the famous entrance uh, into most of like the main seafood market, particularly with the throwing fish shop and everything like that, there's more to it than just that. Even though that's a nice long strip, there's actually six levels to Pike Place. It's just absolutely massive. And some just have restaurants, bars, others have just shops, and some have a mixture of all of them. But yeah, if you really want to get the full experience here, you got to hit up pretty much all six levels. So it's a lot of walking up and down stairs, but it is a massive place. And it does have, of course, viewing platforms as well to check out while you're here. All right, 
So now we've come to kind of like the main event of Pike Place. And of course, that is Pike Place Fish Company. It's right here when you come in through the main entrance off of Pike Place uh, Street. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's really, really cool. It's got the Golden Pig out front. Uh, you can definitely put donations in there that goes uh, towards uh, charitable hospital work and things like that. But this is what you come for. This is where you see the fish toss. You know, you have to buy a fish you know, and a whole fish for that to happen. And it can get a little bit of pricey, but it is great quality stuff. And you can get anything from King Salmon, tuna, all that good, all that fantastic stuff. And they do ship it anywhere in, in the United States overnight for you. So, you know, it's good and they package it up for it to be good for 48 hours within the packaging itself. But yeah, if you come here, you gotta come to Pike Place Fish Company to just watch them do it. Like even when they're not tossing it, every time there's an order, they're like going, hey, and all this kind of good stuff. So it's, it's a fun, fun experience. So one of the things about Pike's Place is this lower part of Post Alley. And that is, of course, the famous gum wall, which is basically the walls on both sides here, just coming outside of Pike's Place Market, has been decades and years upon years of people coming here and putting their chewed gum and sticking it here on the wall. Kind of disgusting, but fascinating at the same time. I don't know who started it. I don't know where the whole concept came from, but it has been allowed and it's happened and it's here. So if you're here at Pike's Place, come and see the famous gum wall. And if you want to, stick your own gum on there. Become part of history. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, it's really kind of disgusting. I'm not a gum guy, but uh, fascinatingly, disgustingly beautiful. Hmm. So after all of those shenanigans over at Pike's Place, we're down here on the waterfront, uh, near Waterfront Park, and of course the Wharf District here in Seattle. Uh, the one I'm actually standing on is the Pier the 59 that has the uh, Seattle Aquarium. And then of course across from me, as you can see, is the Great Seattle Eye, which is we're gonna, what we're gonna make our way to in just a moment. But it's a great place to kind of come down uh, if it's particularly if it's warm. Right now it's nice, it's really, really nice and overcast. But if it's kind of hot and warm inside the main part of Seattle, come down here, you usually get the sea breeze. You can watch uh, the sailboats go by. And of course, this is where a lot of the attractions are. Like I said, the aquarium is right behind me, you have the wheel. And then of course you have um, the Miner's Landing, which has got a bunch of different uh, restaurants and bars there. And there's just so much going on down here. Of course, it also gives you great skyline views of Seattle. So yeah, when you're done with Pike's Place, Come on down the steps and uh, come on down to the Waterfront Park and the Wharf District here in Seattle. see I am here at the top of the Great Wheel and I am at the very very top and we have stopped oh we're moving again but yeah basically the Great Wheel is $17 for admission here at the back end of Pier 57 and it gives you great kind of like skyline views of Seattle it's absolutely fantastic and I think you go around at least one full rotation maybe a second one but even still you get all of these great photos and great looks of the city and what it looks like from the waterfront it's absolutely fantastic so definitely worth it also note that the great seattle wheel is not part of uh their uh, city pass so seattle has a city pass where you can get like three or four uh combo attractions like the aquarium the space needle uh the art museum things like that the, the, the Great Wheel of Seattle is its own separate entity. It's never it's not part of the city pass as far as I was able to find. But yeah, any, either way, it's worth it just to come up here. They have a little mini bar uh, before you enter so you can actually get a cocktail and drink it while you're here on the wheel and just enjoy the skyline of Seattle.
was fun. And uh, they actually go around four full rotations for the wheel with kind of like a stop at the top for uh, pretty much almost every car at one point in time. So it is actually really kind of worth it because that's like, you know, it's about 15 minutes. It gives you plenty of time to have your drink. And when you're done with the wheel, come on down in through and go through Pier 57. It kind of reminds me of like a smaller um, like Naval Pier in Chicago or even like um, Fisherman's Wharf and stuff like that because it's an indoor kind of like entertainment center. It's got uh, restaurants, it's got arcades. It's got a lot of different kind of stuff. So definitely when you're done with the wheel, just come right through and check it out. It's got the carousel and everything. It's awesome. All right, so now that we are done with the wheel, we are coming down the waterfront past all these, all the piers here, and we're in between Pier 55 and 54, and I'm here to grab something to eat. Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna do a couple different places, but the first one is right outside here, right on the waterfront, between 55 and 54, it's called Frankfurt's, and this is basically, uh, from what I was told, it started in 1975, and they're considered the best dogs in Seattle. I don't know about that, I haven't had many hot dogs in Seattle, but we're gonna try theirs because this looks fantastic. It's a kosher style, all beef, uh, like Coney Island dog style hot dog with, I got chili cheese on top of it. They keep the prices relatively fair, particularly for being down here. But I mean, they and given the fact that they put so much chili and cheese on it, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So bottoms up to you guys. You know what? That's a dang good dog. You can't say whether or not it's the best one in Seattle. It's the best one I've had. That is delicious. They also have their own fresh squeezed lemonade. Full lemon in every cup. Really nice. I could use a little bit more bucker to it, but that flavor is really, really good. Yeah, while you're walking down the waterfront, check out Frankfurters. All right, so now that we've had our Frankfurter at the Frankfurter, uh, I've come right next door to Pier 54, and we are here at Ivor's Clam Restaurant, and they are known for their clams, it's in the name. So I went ahead and got myself a cup of delicious looking clam chowder. So it's a white clam chowder, so I guess technically you could call it New England style, but it is in, uh, you know, made here in Seattle. So I guess Seattle style, so, but it looks, smells so good. We're gonna try that. Uh, oh, potatoes, clam, celery in there. The, uh, let me smell the onion. Ooh, I'm gonna try that real quick. Oh. Oh, that is really, really good clam chowder. I can see why they've been around since 1938. Damn, that's fantastic. Walking off the uh, hot dog and chowder already. There, one thing to remember, parts of Seattle coming up from the wharf, it is rather hilly. It's not San Francisco level, but it is hilly. So, excuse me if I huff and puff. <sighs> So behind me here is actually kind of a really kind of cool little secret. If you're up on Fifth Avenue and you come up the hill, uh, I'm heading to the uh, Sky Observatory, the Columbia Center. However, before, right before you get to that, along Fifth Avenue between Marion and Columbia, is the Lonti Hotel. And inside the Lonti Hotel lobby is a entrance that comes up to what used to be known as the Sanctuary here in Seattle. And it's an old uh, 1908 church that looks really kind of cool. I mean, it's got a massive dome. That organs set behind me is just massive and amazing. And I think they stopped services back in the 1970s. And then there was kind of a thing when the Loti Hotel was being built, whether they should, you know, uh, destroy it or not. And they ended up, uh, the people of Seattle ended up fighting to keep the historical building. And it's basically kind of been uh, added to the lobby of the Loti Hotel. So and it's free to come in, you know, you don't have to stay at the hotel. Uh, but yeah, it's just a kind of like a little secret, uh, secret place to kind of check out on your Seattle trip that most people don't even think about.
And as promised, we are here at the Columbia Center, which is the tallest building in Seattle. And I believe it is also the tallest observatory uh, on the Pacific Northwest. And it's absolutely awesome. It's give you, it gives you a 360 degree view of the entire bay, the Puget Sound, the east side, heading towards uh, the, uh, the Cascade Mountains. You have the Olympic Mountains in the background uh, on the west side. It's just, it's stunning. Everywhere you look, you've got a view from up here. It's 360 degrees, 902 feet high. You're 73 stories up. So if you're afraid of heights, it's uh, you know it's it, it it'll it'll doozy doozy you out there for a little bit. But it's really cool. I mean, just everywhere I look, it's even you know it's it's over 100 somewhat feet taller than the Space Needle. So and I think it's just. You know, it, the Space Needle is so touristic now. The fact that this one here is just, you know, it's it's kind of a hidden one. I'm, I'm like, I, I know it's like a day, daytime on a, what, Tuesday that I'm filming this, but even still, it's like, the Space Needle would still have a line. Right now, here, I'm up here with like four other people. And it's just, it's it's so nice. They have a uh, bar up here called the Sky Bar, the Sky View Observatory. Uh, and when you get your ticket, the ticket is, $30 for an adult for non-Washington residents uh, but you do get like a $5 coupon where you can go ahead and get a drink so like uh, me yeah you know, I got a little uh, little gin and tonic little G&T while I'm up in the clouds so but this is absolutely amazing this is really really cool Okay, so after the Sky Observatory, we're headed down to Seattle's Chinatown, but there's one spot you wanna check out on the way there, and it's on the corner of South Main Street and uh, South 2nd Avenue. And this is just basically called the Waterfall Garden. It's this small little enclosed area that is kind of like a monument to US postal workers. I don't know what postal workers have to do with water balls, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It's it's not that big, but it's a kind of like beautiful, serene, I wouldn't say quiet because you have the, the, the sound of the waterfall, but like natural sounding spot here in the middle of this crazy big city of Seattle. And it's like the waterfall, is, you know, it's man-made, but it's done very well. The aesthetics are fantastic. The, the placement of all the kind of like trees and plants it's just, it's a great little vibe and kind of serene spot to just kind of decompress if you're having like a crazy day here in Seattle and just to get away and just listen to the sound of the water. It's really, really cool. So definitely check out Waterfall Garden on your way to Chinatown. So we are now in Chinatown, or what is called the International District here in Seattle. And it's actually really kind of cool. You know, it has a lot of the, still the, like the old red rustic building. So I'm guessing this was something else at one point. It's like part of Old Town. And it has since been uh, become kind of more like the, uh, the Asian area of Seattle. But it does have the, the Chinese flair, particularly here at uh, uh, Hinghui Park, which is uh, just a small little uh, middle of Chinatown Central Park. Uh, what's really cool though is they do have a couple of uh, ping pong tables, so you can watch uh, people playing ping pong there. It's just a nice kind of like little spot here in Seattle. We're actually gonna go to one of the larger, uh, I think Asian markets here in the Pacific Northwest, if not on the West Coast, in just a minute. But yeah, Chinatown, really digging it. All right, so this is Wajamaya Market here in Seattle. And this is really cool. It's absolutely massive. If you are looking for an Asian market, Asian snacks, Asian food, 
this place has got it. It's got a huge grocery store with anything that you need when it comes to Asian stuff. And they also do have a food court as well, which has got several different, you know, Thai, Chinese, uh, just there's so many Japanese little fish cakes, uh, so many things that you can find here. There's also even a rather large bookstore. And the first floor is kind of all uh, Asian books written in Korean, Chinese, Japanese. But the second story floor does have, particularly if like, if you're a manga or anime fan of Taku in any way, uh, that's the second story that has it all in English. But it's absolutely massive. It doesn't look like it from outside, but they fill in the space a lot. And there's so much here, you know, groceries, food, uh, beauty products, and of course books, if you need any of that. So yeah, definitely worth coming to check, to check out when you're here in Seattle, in Chinatown. So I am on my way to the water taxi and Pier 50 to go back to West Seattle. But before we get there, I wanted to point out this kind of small little area called the Occidental Square and this small part of Occidental Avenue, which is all pedestrian. It's actually really kind of cool. It's almost kind of like it's a little like a, like an arts district to be fair. It's really, really nice. Got these cool statues of firefighters here behind me. And it's got quite a bit of arts and just the tree coverings is just, it's really, really nice. If you're down here in Seattle, definitely take a, you know, take some time to come to Occidental Square because this is a really, really nice spot very covered you know down on the avenue there you have a couple like you have like a wine tasting spot you have a couple different like boutique shops it's a really kind of cool spot so but anyway onwards to the boat So that was really, really fast. So I wasn't able to kind of go into a whole explanation about the terminal. So I'm gonna do it now when we're pretty much here in West Seattle. Um, as you can see the Seattle skyline in the background, I got there like right about a minute before they were about to take off and they're like, hey, if you want this boat, get on. I was like, uh, okay. So I got on and actually had to download the Transit Go app to actually get my ticket while I was on the boat. And the guy just kind of showed me, he was really, really nice about it. Uh, so that was really kind of cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was what, just a quick 10 minute journey? Like that that water taxi gets you over to West Seattle real fast. So if you are in West Seattle or you're in Seattle, if you wanna to come to either side, this water taxi is, is super quick. It's about a little over five bucks for one way. And it's fantastic. And like I said, that was like 10, maybe 15 minutes max getting over. Like it was super fast, so. But anyway, yeah, I am here in West Seattle and this is pretty much the end of the video. I'm gonna be doing a West Seattle video next, so stay tuned for that one. But in the meantime, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my tour of Seattle, the downtown district, Pikes Place, and all the way down to Chinatown. That was really a lot of fun. There's a lot of parts of downtown Seattle I hadn't been to uh, that I went to in this video. So uh, it was a nice exploration for myself as well. But uh, if you liked the video, uh, give it a big old thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. What are you waiting for? And of course, if you wanna help support, I do have a Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description as well as a buy me a coffee account as well so but anyway guys until we meet again peace out have a great night cheers guys prosh and prosh to y'all Oh, that's good. Now, where's my pretzel?